All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Learn From Home, where we're introducing the brand new three doodler build and play. Ah, I'm so excited. So we're going to unbox this today and show you guys some of the fun things that we can do with this and how it's an amazing new product that we have. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited. But to get started with, uh, you can enter a chance to win a brand new build and play. Um, to do that, part of the process of the build and play is to create characters. So for example, this is one of the characters, uh, Jim the Giraffe uh, and his friends. and. We're going to go on an adventure with them, and the idea is in order to win one, you simply suggest a, a new adventure that the Jim the Giraffe, Ellie Elephant, and their friends should go on, and share the link to this uh, webinar, and then post it on Facebook or Twitter, and tag us at 3Doodler, and then the winner will be announced tomorrow on social media. So good luck. So build and play. Let's go to unboxing. So, this is the Three Doodler Build and Play uh, in the box. Isn't that nice? So, this is designed for a younger age group than any of the pens uh, we've done previously. Which is why I called it the Build and Play by Three Doodler. And essentially, it's a hand crank device that extrudes into molds. But let's look what's inside the box. What's in the box? So, inside your Three D Build and Play box. We have a mold, we have the storybook and some plastic, as well as the building play itself. I'm just going to pop out here. Pop that up, pop that out. And then we have the handle. Now, the wonderful thing about the build and play is it's good for lefties and righties. The handle simply slides in like so. Crank it, or you can pop it out. Pop it in like so. Uh, it does require batteries, so I'm going to undo this. And I have some AAA batteries. I'm going to put in. So you need three AAAs. Uh, you can also use rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable AAAs. Let's take it in. Oh yeah. And we have our R3D building. Now let's see what else is in this box. So all this fun stuff that we have. So we have the molds for making the characters. This is kind of like an injection molding system. Try to be a little uh, restrictive to make it a little easier, especially for younger kids, to make something that's recognizable. Younger or older, I mean, plenty of adults who have appreciated the simplicity of it. It works with the same uh, 3 doodler start plastic. Um, so that's that eco-friendly plastic that's home compostable. It also is non-toxic. Uh, not that you should, but if you consume it, I feel that you shouldn't. And then we have a backdrop uh, that folds out. In fact, it's a double-sided backdrop. One side is the city, and the other side is the jungle. And then we have our 3D build and play storybook. Uh, this is a combination of a storybook and an instruction guide. It shows you how to use the build and play, which we'll be doing here. But it also has an entire story series that goes along with it, where we meet uh, Jim the Giraffe. We learn how to make Jim the Giraffe. We meet Ella the Elephant, Leo the Lion, Pete the Parrot, and Kate the Crocodile. And then once you learn how to build them, we go on an adventure with them, where the one day the friends went on an adventure to the city. So they started out in the jungle, and they went to the cities. And they cross through day and night, rain and shine. And then they arrive in the city, and you can see they have a grand old time in the city where they discovered uh, taxis and ties and all sorts of things. And they doodled them all, didn't try. And then in the end, they all pile back into their taxi cab and head back to the jungle, where they meet back up with their friends. Um, 
And then the idea is now you can continue the story using the 3D build and play. So let's make somebody. So to use it, I simply turn it on. Remember, there's a little arrow to indicate which direction is forwards. So I can rotate it forwards. Now, if you have small hands because you're a child, then you can grip it like this. My hands are kind of big, so I tend to grip it like this when I'm using it. Um, I'm just going to take a strand out, maybe orange. Or actually, no, let's do yellow. So I want to make a Jimmy giraffe. And I simply stick it in. I turn it out, wait for the light to turn green. And then I just crank it. And the material will come out the front after a few cranks. Now this is warm, but it won't, bore, it won't burn you by any means. And you can mold this and shape this how you want. But the really amazing part of this is how you can then stick this into these holes in the mold and go around and fill it up. So I'm just going to start making Jim the Giraffe. And I give it like five or six turns for the small holes, and maybe 10 to 15 turns for the bigger holes. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it, how I'm filling up the mold as I go along. So I'm just going to keep doing that one at a time. And I can visually see how filled it gets by looking down at it. And then it takes around 15 to 20 seconds for this material to harden, so you can take it out of the mold after that time. I'm not pushing down particularly hard or anything, I'm just cranking and making sure that the nozzle tip is in that hole. And you can always push down the excess material to try and get back in the hole if the surrounding holes will come up a bit. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, experiment with how you do this in terms of the order that you do it. We give a suggested order uh, in the activity guide. Let's kind of push that down. You give a suggested order, but um, you'll see if you play around with it that different, different orders can result in different kind of fill patterns. Ah, and then I can see that I filled in my mold. Um, pretty well. And actually, I can even look at this, and if you look really closely, it kind of looks wet on certain sections, and then towards the bottom, it looks opaque. That's because as this material dries, um, it will unstick itself from the side, and so it'll turn from that wet look to an opaque, and I can simply pop it open. But before I pop it open, I'm going to do these legs, because I have to do two legs. Now, all the animal legs are actually shared. I thought it would make it nice and easy for the little ones to not have to make uh, different legs for each of the characters. But obviously, you can just use a different color. Finish this leg up. Let's see? I have my legs and I have my giraffe. I'm going to do one more set of legs, but we're going to give that a second. Uh, something pardon. I said it's about 20 to 30 seconds. And then we simply pop it open. But if we do it too early, these legs still are hardened. Give yeah, that a second. Let's give that a second. Let's go back to the slides for a second. 
Uh, I mentioned, yeah, and these AA batteries, light turns green. Making the molds. And yeah, let's back up. Ah, right, so this should be hard. Then we can pick it out. Oh, it's not. It's okay. I can still have a few seconds to shake that. I didn't wait quite long enough for that one. And then I can just pop these off. Oh, now that it's hardened. And it just pops up like so. And then same with those legs. Now I'm going to make another set of legs. The legs are one of the fastest and easiest pieces to make. And I can see if I haven't filled something enough. So for example, you can see, oh, I didn't fill that all the way. So I can simply stick it in. And then I'll wait a second. I see that someone has asked a question. Uh, how much are refill packs? Um, the refill packs run between um, $3.99 to $4.99. Um, for a pack of 24, we also have tubes of the material, which uh, are 100. I believe those are currently 9.99 on the website. Do you have school packs for kindergarten classes like teacher kits? Not yet, um, but we're hoping to have some uh, relatively soon. How many molds per pack? Are there additional molds available after you finish one? Currently, there is one mold um, per pack, and comes with that one mold. Uh, in the future, we're looking at potentially adding additional molds. Um, so, go back to. Oh, right. Yeah. Go back to this. Let me do that again. My impatience. But that's it. And you can just. Let me split it. So, we're waiting for that to harden. I'm going to attach the legs. And where we attach the legs, I just do about a crank or half a crank. I put some material on the legs, and I can simply attach like so. And now that will stick. And I have half of my draft, and I'm waiting for that other foot to finish. Pardon. We'll see that it looks very much like a giraffe. again to just shoot the material and then this time I'm going to put like that and you do want to kind of do like an A-frame for the animals so that they'll stand up nice and straight um, you can see how they're positioned like, like that if you want to be really obsessive uh, you can take some scissors and maybe cut around if there's any excess flash uh, I did that for some of these other characters so here's some guys that I made earlier. So for example with this crocodile, uh, I made it extra kind of perfect by going around. But now that we have some characters, let's see here. Oh and if I want to change colors I simply reverse, take that material out, and then I can stick in. And there'll be a little left over of the previous color. As you can see it'll quickly change colors into something else. Now I can also take material out and simply stick it into the mold. So let's say do a button mold. That's another way that we could do it. And then I can even close it and then if I wanted to say thicken it up or something I can do that. Which is a how we've done some of this more advanced looking stuff with the with the parrot, for example. When I do parrots, I tend to to layer it up with multiple colors. So for example, that's still hard enough. You can see if I wanted to do the parrot wings or the parrot beak, I could take just a little bit of material and kind of stick it in there like so. And that'll get 
just the beak portion of it. And then I can close it up. And then for wine, switch colors. Let's go with and stick it in. And once again, I'm just gonna wait for now I'm gonna change colors. So I'm gonna use that excess material. Let's do a tie. There's a tie here. Tie oh, doesn't take that much material. So. Now, building the characters is definitely a fun aspect of this, and you can create, obviously, characters beyond um, what our initial suggestions are of characters. So you can see how I have a beak, an orange beak, and a teal head on that. Um, a lot of the real fun here that to be had is how we can make stories out of this. How I can take these characters and then create additional storylines as I play with them. Um, so that's one of the real aspects of this is how we can continue stories or make up entirely new stories um, using these characters as kind of a base to, to go with. Uh, let's get that. So there are accessories for the animals. Uh, I think I mentioned there are hats and ties. So for example, this is a little hat that you can make, a fedora, because these are hipster animals. Or you can make like the tie that I was making earlier. Oops, this was a green screen. Here we go, here's a white tie. Um, and here I'll show you, so I take out I did do a tie for this one, so I can simply pop that tie off, so now I have a tie. And I have two choices on what I can do. I can put a little material on the character and then stick the tie to it if I wanted to permanently stick it. Or what I've been doing lately is I've been making like a little loop with the plastic. Because you have that. 20 to 30 seconds before it hardens, I can make a fully functional necktie. And wait for that to harden. And now, turn the giraffe and have a tie, which I can take on and off. Um, and I'm not going to damage it every time that I like take it on or off. And you can do something similar like with the hat. So I had that, that red fedora example. I can extrude a little material, dab that material onto each end there, like so. And I'll wait for that to harden. And I'll have a hat that I can then place on to any of the characters. You can even put it down and dab it on if you want. Or you can probably just draw it like so. Like I can extrude and move it at the same time and not necessarily have to use the molds. The molds definitely make it significantly easier to make these characters, which is why we have those molds. And, you know, I can have my characters go from the city, from the jungle to the city, swap them around. Oops, just a fold. Brand new out of the box. Um, and now that they're in the city, maybe they, they feel like they need a little hat decorate my character and that's tie hat. So. Um, I can also always add features like eyes to or make they have eyes. They're a little small, which they are they are there. But uh, I'm gonna make the giraffe really pop. So I'm gonna load in some white to make whites of their eyes. We still have some of that old parts left, so I'm just gonna use up that until I get some white coming out. Alright, you can always just clean the tip by using your fingers. It's not it's not hot or anything like that. 
Uh, and now I'm going to take the giraffe right where his eye is. I'm going to hold the build and play and just do like a half a turn to make a big white. Like so. And then I have to take it out. And I will give a brown eye. Brown eye giraffe. Sounds good. So I have some brown here. So yeah, I'm going to use up my excess to make something. I'm going to change the color of this parrot next to him. Alright. And then just a dot. Alright, so I'm going to use my finger to remember that. And I think it adds just a little more character. I mean, you don't have to do this. I can also add a smile to this character. And then just a... So And with these guys, I did hats and ties and did their mouths. So, yeah. This is LA Elephant for you. So, uh, you can always mix and match pieces as well. Um, you know, for example, there's no reason that I can't put wings onto uh, a giraffe, make a winged giraffe. Or there's also a taxi cab mold that we have in there, um, which I'll show you now, which is one of the accessories. So I have a cab mold, which is this uh, bottom one right here. And to make it stand, what I do is, you know, I do the, the taxi cab mold and do the wheels. Let's do kind of the wheels in one color with just a couple turns. Oops, sorry. Uh, and now I have those wheels, and then I can switch colors and do the rest of it. Um, make an orange cap. Like so. Again. Oh, it's coming out orange. Oh. And then I would simply fill in the rest of the taxi cab. And then I can use those feet, that feet mold. Uh, to make the cab stand. I can do that with almost anything. Oh, put a little more in there because I can see a gap. And I can wait for that to harden, and then just like with this one, I can make feet and then just attach the feet to the back, and then the cab will stand up on its own. Yes, you, you crank backwards to reverse the color and change it. Crank forwards, and like I said earlier, there's a small arrow, and you can just swap between left and right. Now, one of the other features about this is uh, after about 20 minutes, um, it will auto turn itself off. This is to save battery life, just in case someone left it sitting out by itself. And you simply turn it off and back on, it'll heat back up and it's good to go. Um, but that's to save some power in that. So uh, backdrops. We have additional backdrops that were also available on our website. Um, for example, we have a space backdrop and a number of other ones. You know, there's a, an ocean one for the summertime, a carnival backdrop and you should check those out they're on the app other places and you can really take this to some some different levels um, you can also make your own backdrops uh, my son and I made a library backdrop the jungle library and we had uh, reading is fun and then we made all of our characters together and we made a little story actually and I'd love to, to actually show everyone the little story before we do quick tips so here goes What's the story? Kim the giraffe's birthday. 
You need your last living in the eight. The tail was there. You need a lion there. Take the frog with it. But not ever. Every elephant has to live. And I think they waited for ever to stop working. They took a taxi to the jungle. Yes, to the jungle because they would feel like a good thing. Yes, I think we are happy. And they don't own to give them a sign. They were showing them everyone in the jungle. They just wait to have them hide. They wiggled and jumped. After the party, they went to a look. So that was something my son and I did uh, in about a half a day where we created the backdrops, we created the characters, and then I asked him to just tell me a story, uh, and I recorded him saying the story, and then together we did a little stop motion animation and, and put it together, um, which is a great way to kind of extend the play even further, not only the additional backdrops and stuff, but it's just a great tool to help kids uh, express stories. So. Um, some other just quick tips. You can try holding a pen in different orientations. Um, so you saw me holding it like this, but that's only because I'm an adult. But different angles that you hold the pen uh, will help to flow the material in different locations. So that's another way to fill in a spot that might be a little harder to fill. Um, open the molds, doodle in tight spaces. As I said, you can always, if, I, if you missed something in the mold, you can always open the molds, fill in the piece, and then close the mold back up. Um, not just to accessorize, but like if I, oh, I don't have any material on there. I'm just going to add a little yellow. Here, I'll go back over to the other one to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say, okay, I don't like how that came out, so I'm just going to add some material by extruding some to a couple different spots. And then I can simply close the mold back up. And then wait a few seconds for it to fill in those, those gaps. And that's a really great way you can see those two uh, dark spots. That's the material that hasn't hardened yet, whereas the rest of it has fully hardened. So you can easily see. Well, I think I just saw someone asking me if this is hot. This is not hot. Um, this is the three doodler, this is the same material as the three doodler start, so it's not hot, it's warm and it's not going to burn you. Whereas the three doodler create plus is, is very hot. Uh, what else? And then I mentioned the small details, how you can fill in the molds and different small details, and that's how you can, you can get things like these wings, um, where you have multiple colors. And don't forget to mix and match, you know, like I was saying how you can make wings for another animal, make a crocodile that has wings, or uh, or you can put an elephant's top onto a different animal, see what kind of chimeras you can kind of come up with, and, and really extend the play of what can be done. Um, yeah. Uh, there is instructions in the Three Doodler app as well for the build and play. We've just added them. Very excited about it. It has details on making each of the characters. It also offers the three new backgrounds right are available right there for download, and you can print them out. Um, you just print them out and cut them out. Uh, right now, my favorite one is space, so I'm excited about the space one. Um, and there's obviously additional uh, projects on there for both the Start and the Create Plus. And as always, the Three Dollar Start Learn from Home pen set is currently available, uh, which is a forty-nine dollar. That's for a six-plus audience, whereas this is more for a four-plus audience. So it's for a younger audience, uh, the build and play. Um, and that currently is available when it comes to two hundred strands of material. So.
is quite nice. And do remember that that three doodler start plastic is compatible with the build and play. So even like the glow in the dark plastic, for example. So if you wanted to make a glow in the dark elephant, you can do that. Uh, and then, as always, the three doodler create plus learn from home series is available. This is a reminder that this is a 14 plus item in the sense of it's hot. That one does get very hot, but you can make some pretty amazing things with it. And it can do lots of different materials. So it's a great item. So do uh, share with us what you create. We'd love to see what everyone will start making with these. Uh, they're a great, uh, fun item. And it's a great thing to do, especially with younger kids. And since we're all stuck around at home, it's a fun thing to do to tell stories. Uh, I'm just going to look really quickly to see if there are any additional questions that I might have missed. Uh, yeah, we will, as I said, we'll hopefully have more and different molds uh, happening in the future. So thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, it was great. Um, can you use the 3 Doodler app on a smartphone with a screen protector? Yes, you can. Um, with the 3 Doodler start, you can, and the build and play, you can doodle directly onto your phone. Uh, if it has a protector, that's also fine. If you're gonna use the 3 Doodler Create Plus, the hot one, then we recommend you use a, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> a doodle pad, which is just a, a sheet of plastic, a very thick, heavy duty sheet of plastic that you put over on top of the phone case to prevent it from melting it. But the start and the uh, create plus, uh, the start and the build and play are perfectly fine to use directly on the phone. Even if you have a screen protector, it, it should be fine. You're not melting anything, that's for sure. So yeah, I think that was the last question. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, and yeah, we'll have more uh, content coming out uh, over the summer uh, for everyone to try different things and lots of fun stuff. And I hope everyone stays safe. Bye.